where did you grow up? Tell me about this, this structure that created this powerful being, family dynamic, sisters, brothers, small street. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And it's funny, until this year, a lot of people don't know much about Tulsa, mm -hmm. but now it's in the media and we think about um, the, the race massacre. And so people are definitely more invested in Tulsa. You know, I grew up in an area that was underprivileged, that was dangerous, um, and in a situation without parental guidance or financial resources. My parents were never married. My dad's an immigrant. My parents were never married. My mom had a bunch of struggles, um, never really knew how to parent. And so I took care of my younger brother who was a few years younger than me. Our circumstance was tough. Like we wore the same clothes to school every day and we had to figure out how we were gonna eat dinner that day. I mean, we were our own little heroes at nine years old. Some of the, you know, I talk about in, the, in my book, getting robbed at gunpoint at eight years old. You know, those are the kind of traumatic situations that kids are not supposed to, to deal with. Um, so yeah, I mean, and I bounced around in middle school and high school to friends' homes, you know, because the heat was off or we didn't have water for showers. And so a lot of my friends, they knew my story. So their parents would let me stay the weekend here and there. And I just knew that I had no plan B and I had to get out. And I felt like education was my way. And so it's like, no one was checking my grades growing up. Nobody cared about any of that, but I always made straight A's. I went to a magnet school that I applied for myself when I was 12, magnet high school, got accepted. No one knew. Took the, the, the city bus to get there. Had a job at 14 at Chick-fil-A. Worked two jobs in high school. I mean, just making sure that we could pay bills. I was really the parent. My mom always, and she admits to this now, it's like she was the kid and I was the parent. And you know, she struggled with a lot of depression and anxiety and it was, yeah, it was, it was, it was a struggle. And so I ended up going to Oklahoma, University of Oklahoma, because it was close to home and my brother was still at home and I'm mom, basically mom. So I, I stayed in the state and took out, I had a full ride, but took out student loans to help mom pay rent and to help pay bills. And those, that student loan debt followed me forever. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, just just there are things that I thought was so normal in my upbringing that my husband even now I'll tell a story oh when I was 12 this happened and he'd say that's not normal that's not supposed to happen mm -hmm. I'm like really mm -hmm. really I mean that 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 was part of you never been robbed at some point mm -hmm. oh wow <laughs> you know and so it, it was just such a norm I mean like I never went to therapy for things like this that was normal what is that there's nothing wrong with that and so it's as I'm getting older I'm realizing like oh I, I still have a lot of the trauma. You know, I even told my husband, it's like, I, I call it poor kid mentality. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stuff that I do because I was a poor kid. Mm -hmm. So like as an agent, the last six years, I've been a sports agent and I've been a civil litigator at a law firm. Okay. The law firm, I did like securities fraud litigation, high level complex litigation, third largest law firm in the world. And then I did sports and those two jobs did not intertwine whatsoever. I was literally killing myself working at both jobs, 90 hours a week as an attorney, because I was afraid that I would be poor. Mm. I, I literally had back-to-back -back top 10 picks in the NFL, starting quarterback. You know, I got 20 players and I still would not leave my job because I was so afraid to be poor. My husband's like, we're good. We're good. And it's like this poor kid mentality. And I, I just left eight weeks ago. Congratulations. <laughs> that makes Thank me you. happy. Thank you. That was right Why around the announcement. Well, we'll get to we'll, yeah. we'll get into that in a second. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, so yeah, it's just like that. there's that trauma that you don't know that's there. You don't know why you do things. Mm -hmm. And then you look back on your childhood and go, oh, that's why. Got it. I can't, I can't. Your story gives me chills and I can't help but root for you. And anyone who is listening feels the same way. I, I, I really do salute you, sis, because I know how hard it is. Thank and I you. have the same poor child mentality. I, I understand that. I don't have it anymore now, though. I be spending my money like all over the place. So like what you need, bye, bye, bye. I don't I'm trying even, to get there. You're going to be there because I'd be like, how much, what cost? I'm going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> takes a minute, though. It takes a long time. Yeah. So, sure. But I want to go sure. back to a couple of things that you said. Sure. You, 
you were always the parent, which I think is interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, I could see that in a lot of ways. I relate to that in a lot of ways. So this is why I appreciate you for being so honest. Like I was the only child, but I was definitely my mother's emotional touchstone. You know, yeah. at, at, as a child, I shouldn't know the things I know. I shouldn't be oh. exposed to the things I was exposed to. Um, and sometimes when our parents are just kids themselves, they don't know any better. How did you, at such a young age, bouncing around, where do you think that, let me get two jobs, let me let me take care of my little brother, let me take care of my family, well, who planted that seed in you? Um, is it, do you think it's in your DNA? Because something happened to you at a young enough age for you to realize that if I don't do it, no one else will. Mm-hmm. You know, I get asked that all the, all the time. Did you have a role model or who did you look up to? And mm-hmm. There's no one. And I, you know, you, you mentioned DNA. It feels like it's just this level of grit that I had that other people didn't. I don't know where it came from. Mm. You know, I had my brother, my younger brother, who was the total opposite. You know, he fell in line with the statistic of what happens when you grow up in the hood and you're a poor kid, mm-hmm. right? Not graduating from from high school mm-hmm. and gang mm-hmm. and drug. Mm-hmm. I mean, the whole thing. And then there was me, this scholar student. I don't know what it is that gave me the inner drive and I also, you know, it's funny because I don't know how I learned and I knew so much. I mean, I would be like 10 years old and understanding the electric bill. Mm. I remember I met my my best friend in high school and I was asking inappropriate questions like, how much is your electric bill? She's like, I don't know. <laughs> She's like, why would I know that? I knew stuff like that. I'm like, you don't know what your electric bill costs? You don't know mm-hmm. how to pay the water bill? Mm-hmm. The things that I shouldn't have known. I mean, even when I married my husband, we got married so young, he never had to deal with any of that. He had great parents. And so I felt yeah. like I used to, and I don't want to say talk down, but I'd be like, you don't understand how to finance a car. Sure. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> but I shouldn't have had to do that. I shouldn't have had to know that at 14 or 15, you know? And so I don't know where it came from. Probably fear, you know, probably that I, or you, just some level of grit. It has to be in your DNA. Like if you I did think a fit, so too. It, it just has to. Why? Well, I think. I know so when I went to Africa and I went to Cape Coast where you get to see the castle where they literally stole all of us and our identities and by us I mean Africans and 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 took them to different places whether it be the Caribbean or the Americas the level of uh, trauma and sadness um, is unimaginable now but then just think about traveling, being taken away from your family, coming to an entire place and succeeding and thriving in spite of and still demanding that this place give us the dream it promised us because we too have been citizens, even though they deny us as, as African-Americans. I, it's in the DNA. Like, it's just yeah. who we are. 